Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and I am the creator from Lily Rose Craft Room. And for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make my Etsy bestseller. But before we get started, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you guys don't miss it on any new videos. And like always, all the items that I use, I will be linking them down in the description below so you guys can check them out. All right guys, let's get started. The file that I'm going to be using I bought from an Etsy seller. So I already downloaded it and I'm going to show you how I print it on Silhouette Studio. So the reason I'm using Silhouette Studio and I don't even have a Silhouette machine is because this software is completely free and I didn't want to use Cricut Design Space because when I print with that it's going to give me a black border and this software allows me to use a whole entire sheet to print. Another software that I like to use to print my sublimation designs is Canva. But with Canva, it does get a little tricky when you're trying to resize your designs. So that's when I hop onto Silhouette Studio to edit my design. All right, so we're gonna be looking at the right side where it says page setup, and we are going to be focusing on number four where it says media size. My sublimation paper is a letter size, so I selected letter. It doesn't matter what the other ones are set to because we're not gonna cut it, we're only going to print this design. Then we're gonna upload our design, so we're gonna go on file and select open. Then you're just gonna find the destination of your file and then you're going to hit okay. So now that our design is uploaded into our Silhouette Studio, we're going to resize it. So I have the measurements for my mug size. It is a hog 15 ounce mug. So to resize this design, you simply wanna click on it and then a bar will appear on the top where it shows your width and your height. You just wanna click the unlock button to make it unlocked. And the measurements for my 15 ounce mug is 9.5 inches in width and a 4.2 inches in height. And then I just hit enter and it should resize. And with this size design, I'm able to get two prints in one. So I rotate the design long ways. So with that green dot, you just grab onto it and just rotate it around. And then you bring it to the very edge of the red line. And then to duplicate another one, you simply right click and then you hit duplicate. And then we're just going to properly align them together. And then to print it, we're gonna click file and we're gonna scroll all the way down where it says print and we're gonna select that. Then it's gonna give us a little preview and then we're just gonna select print. And then this window pops up for print, but I don't know why it always does this, but I always hit cancel and then I have another print box in the back where I'm able to change my sublimation preferences. So I find my linked sublimation printer and then I hit preferences and I have my settings already preset. So this is the one I use and I'll show you what it looks like. So I click my sublimation preset and the paper tie is always set to paper mat and the quality is always high. Then I go over to more options and I always make sure that the mirror image is selected and I turn off bio-directional printing. So what this does, it slows down the print. That way it takes its time printing and it gives me a better quality. And then on advanced settings, I always make sure that my color mode is set to Adobe RGB. And then I hit okay and I'm ready to print. And with my settings this way, I've never had a problem with my image being dull or anything. All my prints come out very vibrant. And we just hit print and let me show you how I load my printer and which paper I use. This is the printer that I'm using. It's an Epson ET2800 and it's a printer that I converted to sublimation. And if you're thinking of getting into the sublimation world, I did make a video on how to convert a printer to sublimation. So I will link that so you can take a look at it. The sublimation paper that I'm using is from Craft Express, and this is the 125 grams, and it's a size 8.5 by 11 inches. I love the thoughtfulness that they put into this packaging because they give you a chart of basically everything from glass mugs to ceramic mugs, coasters, blankets, t-shirts, and it gives you like the temperature and the time to put it because I'm always looking these things up, but for that packaging to have it there, I really appreciate that. And so you don't get confused on which side is which, the back of it does have watermarks, so you don't get confused that that is the back. So the way we feed this Epson 2800 with the paper, we just simply insert it in the back. And then we just watch it print out. And also don't be alarmed because it is mirrored, so it's gonna be backwards when it prints out. But once you place it onto your mug, it's gonna be the right way. You also want to remember when you have a converted sublimation printer, 
to print at least once or twice a week that way your print heads don't get clogged because this sublimation ink is a little bit thicker than regular ink. I love this print and this design because it looks like it's 3D or inflated so this is no wonder why this is an Etsy bestseller. Next I'm just cutting the edges of the print and then I'm going to cut it down the middle. Now I have it cut down to the perfect size for my mug. After I'm done trimming my design, I like to turn on the mug press so it can start warming up while I apply the wrap to my mug and that way it's ready when I'm ready. This is the mug that I'm using. It's from the stainlessdepot.com. It's a 15 ounce two-tone pink mug. I really love this two-tone mug and it's perfect for Valentine's Day coming up and Mother's Day. So. If you're thinking of starting mugs like these, now is the time to do so because you know the holidays come up fast. So when I'm handling my mugs, I never wanna touch the outside. I always grab it from the inside and I really avoid touching the outside of the mug only because I don't want any oils from my fingertips going on the mug. Next, to prep it for sublimation, I like to take a lint roller and I just roll it along the mug to get any debris and lint off the cup. So to place a sublimation wrap on the mug, I simply measure where the handle is and I just kind of eyeball it that it's even on both ends. And once I see that they're even on both edges, I kind of push on the paper that way it's nicely pressed onto the cup. And then I use heat tape to secure the wrap on the cup. So once I got one edge of tape on the cup, I like to pull the wrap from the other side only because we need that paper to be really, really tight against the cup and doing it this way avoids any ghosting or fades in the cup. And that is the main trick for sublimation is the number one thing, make sure that paper is tight onto the surface. And another little trick, I place the tape on the edge of the paper and then I pull it again and then I lay it on the mug. And I just can't stress this enough that you need the paper to be as tightly as possible onto the surface. Next with the heat tape, I just tape all the edges of the sublimation paper onto the mug. You might not have to do all this taping. I've seen people only tape around where the handle is, but I've had my sh fair share of ruined mugs. So I just like to play it safe and just make sure everything is taped and everything is nicely secure. Once we wrapped our sublimation paper around the mug, Next, we get a piece of butcher paper and we wrap that around the mug also. And the reasoning for this extra layer of butcher paper is because when the ink is heated, it turns into a gas. And if you don't lock it in with butcher paper, the images will become fuzzy and the ink will get all over your heat press, which is hard to clean. So that is the reasoning why we use butcher paper. And with this step, I don't go all crazy with the tape. It's just to protect the sublimation paper. So I just do one piece of tape on each side. Next, I wiggle my mug inside my Cricut mug press and I push it all the way down and then we press down the handle. Then we just let it run its course and I believe it's like about six minutes until the beeping sound. And it has a cool little process light so it'll keep blinking and blinking and then it'll go to the next one and keep blinking and blinking until it's all the way done and then it'll make a beeping sound to open it. And when it's done, all the process lights will be blinking as well as the sound, that way you know it's ready. And you simply just open up the press and take out your mug by the handle. And always remember to grab the mug by the handle because that will be cool to the touch. Don't try to touch around the mug because it's very, very hot and make sure you have gloves around. You can either peel your sublimation cold or hot. I don't think it really matters. I've never seen a difference. I like to peel it hot and then there's also a sticker at the bottom of the cup. It's always best to peel it while it's hot that way the adhesive on it is melted. Next I carefully peel the paper off and like I said you can either peel it hot or cold. I'm peeling while it's hot. I'm just being very careful not to touch the mug because like I said it is very very hot. If you notice like when you peel your paper if your cup is a little bit rough like if the paper got attached to it. Don't worry, that happens to me too sometimes. I don't know why, but if you wash it in the sink, it comes off and the cup is very smooth. And cup number two is also finished, so we're just unwrapping to reveal the beauty. And like always, here is the finished look. Look at how beautiful this design came out. 
the 3D look of it, the inflated look of it, it just looks really real. And the colors and everything is very, very vibrant. And that is it for my video of my Etsy best seller. And something about me is I don't believe in gatekeeping. I believe that there's room for everybody to grow. This design is public for everybody to use. So if you wanted to use this design, you go for it, do your thing. If you watch this video till the end, thank you so, so much. Show me by putting coffee emojis in the comments. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.